Come on, will you, big brother? Yeah, I'll be with you in just a minute. Oh, yeah. Why, still smoking here? Yeah. Come on, don't take root there. Just put it out, will you? Hold your horses, little brother. Saddle. Cavalry. Somebody's in trouble. Easy. Let me look at that wound. Captain Harris, send me to get help. Easy, easy. Gotta have help. Gotta help. Easy. Hold on. There's a bullet in his chest. I'm surprised he got this far. Candy, I, I got some medicine and bandages here in my saddlebag. No, oh, this is too late. What we need now is a bugler to blow taps. Again, the blood spots. Captain Harris.
Well, well, it ain't Sergeant Canada's boy. All growed up. Order the ordinance, man. Haven't you blowed yourself up yet? That's what I always liked about you. Always a kindy greeting. Where you been, boy? Oh, riding. Looking around. I'll take him. Kids. That's the kind of horse soldiers we get these days. They think we won this fight. We've all got to learn. Yeah. But it takes time. My guess is these kids ain't gonna live that long. You take cover, Mrs. Harris. Glad you happened by when you did. We need help badly. Yeah, we sure do. Again. Real soon. That's right, Candy. You gave me quite a shock when I seen you. You better brace yourself. You're gonna have a few shocks yourself. I gotta take care of the horses and get sorted out. It'll be a while for the charges. That's right, Sergeant. Is Mr. Cartwright? Uh, that's Mr. Canada. Candy for short. Kennedy? Yeah, I've known him since he's no bigger than my thumb. I helped raise him. You and every other non-com on the row? His father used to be first sergeant B Troop, my old outfit. He was killed on patrol. Mr. Kennedy, my thanks for giving us a hand. Sure. Sergeant, I want a man posted here at all times. One on the trail where we came in, and one on the lakeside. That slope's almost vertical, but they might try it anyway. And Mr. Cartwright. I'm short of men. I'm going to have to use you and your people, too, if I may. Sure. Captain, this fellas down there were riding after you pretty hard. What were they after? Gold. Army gold. That ambulance is a pay wagon. You're right, but I'm going to have to ask you how you knew. Well, like the sergeant said, I'm an army brat. I grew up at Fort Despair. Fort what? Fort Delaney. The men there called the Fort Despair, and a lot of other things. The trouble was that the um, army owned the forts and the outlaws owned the trails in between them. And Colonel Spit and Polish John Purcell had an idea to use an ambulance as a pay wagon to move payroll gold. It worked fine for a while until the, uh, until the word got out. Well, Captain, I think the army would be better off to use a real pay wagon now. The outlaws would probably think it was an ambulance. Guard post out, man, sir. Very good. Something ain't had a chance to tell you, Candy. Angel Montana's busting that bunch out there. Yeah, I saw him when he was shooting at me. You know him? Yeah, I know him, too. We were kids together. He was one of the blanket Indians that hung around the Fort Gate. Half Mexican, half Apache. And all bad. Jim. Trooper Perkins is badly wounded. He's in great pain. I've done everything I can for him. No, I know you have. He's only a boy. He's terribly frightened. If you could just talk to him.
Ja. She was my wife. Go up there and draw their attention from the back. We will attack from the front. See patrol. Andale. It's shorter. The party's now down to four able-bodied men and my wife. And four of us. What's their strength? About 18 at last count. But Trooper O'Brien rode out at dawn this morning. Captain. Should be... I uh, didn't have a chance to tell you, but we, uh, we found Trooper O'Brien. The last thing he was able to say was that Captain Harris needed help. Look, as a favor to me, I'd like my wife to go on thinking that O'Brien got through all right. Of course. Jim! Oh, oh. It's shut full of holes! I didn't see it in time. I, I know, hide. honey, you were taking care of her. Cut it, cut it! There's about a quart left. Again, Mr. Kennedy. Seems that we're more than ever in your debt. Forget it. I don't think they'll try that again. Just thinking all that water I wasted on those dead ashes. I think we could use a couple of buckets of that lake. Half full. Mm. That's great. That means we got a little less than six quarts left for us and the animals, and they got a stream within easy reach of where they're dug in. Captain, what about ammunition? Well, my people have between 40 and 50 rounds per man. How about yours? I guess about the same. Ah. Uh, I suppose we should pass the wood around with nobody to shoot at anything unless they can't miss. Yeah. We'll be here a long time. Captain Harris! Sergeant Orty! All right, we see your white flag. What do you want? I want to talk to Canada. Candy, this is your old friend, your old amigo, Angel. Angel Montana, come on out and talk to me. Nelly for my old friend. Here I am. Speak your piece. Candy, you are on the wrong side. You should be down here with us. 
I like it where I am. <laughs> you joke, amigo. After what the army did to you, you could not want to help the army. Give it up, Angel. Right away while you still can. Why you want to die to protect gold that is not yours? Come with me. I will give you a double share. Not interested. I will give you back the woman they stole from you. Come on. And then we spend the gold in Mexico City. For the last time, I'm not interested. Somebody must have kicked you on the head. You are not smart anymore. Angelina. I had him in my sight three or four minutes. You're good to have around. No, you will all die. And the woman, she will die a hundred times. Winged him. I sure did. Kay, down! Get down! I tell him and I tell him. But they never listen. Andy's pure army, Brad. Grew up in the forts of Southwest. Didn't know that, huh? Uh-uh. No, he never told us. His mother died when he was four. Heat, dust, frontier lonesomes. Happened pretty often on Conroe. He knew the manual of arms when he was seven. When he was nine, his pa was killed. No folks, no place to go. A lot of us had a hand in raising him. If you want to call it that, mostly he... He grew up by himself. He was riding scout at the age of 17. Do you mind if I join you? There's one thing that hasn't changed. Army iron ration. Make a billy goat go hunting for a nice tender tin can. <sighs> Who's your father? About the same. I've only seen him once since... since I saw you last. He was in Washington about a year ago. Hey, his hair is snow white. He's got a few more lines in his face, but otherwise he hasn't changed. You wouldn't know how. <laughs> Colonel Spit and Polish, Purcell. You're wondering about her, huh? Yeah. Yeah, I ring a lot. Another army, Brad. Her pa served with Candy Spa, both of the non-coms. When the war come, he, uh, he got a battlefield commission, ended up as a colonel. They grew up together, fought and made up. Then one day, he come back from patrol after a run and fight with the Apache. Four survivors, seven bodies stretched across the saddles. Doing a man's work, he, he figured he was a man. So he, he took Anne into town and married her. And when they got back to the fort, he, he marched in and told the colonel. Two hours later, he was, he was riding out on another patrol. I might as well say it, there's one man I learned to hate. So did I. Oh, he only did what he thought was best for both of us. You can believe that, and I don't. I was going to kill him when I got back to the fort. I'm still not sure why I didn't. Because you couldn't. You know, you've changed. You're a lot prettier than you were. Why didn't you write? Because I didn't know where you were. Back east, that's all he told me. You were back east and the marriage was annulled. 
He promised me he'd see you got all my letters. When he was in Washington, he, he just said you wrote off and left no address. He's a liar. Jim. Uh, oh, my husband, Captain Harris. Yeah, we met. Mr. Kennedy, my wife told me all about you. We were just talking about you, too, Captain. Oh. And, you know, it really isn't safe for you to be wandering around up here at night. You might silhouette yourself Jim, against this. You forget I was born out here. I knew that before I was five. Stay below the crest. It's the first thing you learn out here, isn't it, Candy? Yes, just about. You're right, Anne. I, I did forget. Very good to me. And he's an officer and a gentleman, just what the colonel wanted. Stop that. He was what I thought I wanted. I thought I was never going to see you again. Don't you understand? I had learned to live with that. I told myself you were dead. Why did you have to come back now when it's too late? It's not too late. Yes, it no, is. No, it isn't, Anne. And any other time, any other place, I'd, I'd just walk up and we'd say hello and go by politely. And then I'd just walk away and maybe I'd come back and stand and look. Well, here there's no time to look. You're my wife, Anne. No. Yes, you are. You're my wife. I don't care what it says in some book someplace. You're my wife. was my wife, Mr. Cartwright. And I sure didn't annul that marriage. Anything? It's all quiet now. There was some movement down there a few minutes ago. Let's hope they stay down there. Yeah. At least we got the moonlight on our side. But they got to know we're running out of water. Well, it's tomorrow's problem. I'll be back in about an hour. If you see Candy, tell him I'm looking for him. Yeah, you know, I've been trying to figure out what I'd do in Candy's place, and I don't come up with no answers. You're not using that? Reckon it's the least we can do for Kelly. Yeah, all right. We won't be telling Montana's bunch anything they don't already know. You seen Candy? Bedroll, but he ain't in it. Captain and his missus was by a few minutes ago. He was asking about him, too. Maybe you better search the area. I already did. Going, huh? Saving his hide. I don't know what I blame him. You believe what you want, but don't ever say that again. Not where I can hear it.
Jim, I don't believe it. Annie wouldn't just leave. Look, Annie, you've got to believe it. I don't know how or why, but he's gone. We've searched everywhere. Honey, you better get some sleep. I will, Jim. Presently. What is the matter, Rojo? The bugle. Why do they play that, huh? For the dead. If you want to think about something, think about the four little fat kegs of gold that Rio saw yesterday. Four little fat kegs of gold that we will have tomorrow. into their camp. How? Angelito was a friend of mine once, remember? He taught me how a long time ago. D did you see him? He almost stepped on me. But he didn't see me. For the first time, I'm beginning to believe we might get out of this. And for the first time, I'm beginning to realize that Mr. Kennedy is quite a man. Oh, he is, Jim. He is. Yeah, don't expect no cheers from me. I just want to know which guard you passed on the way in. Skinny, blonde-haired kid. It figures. He'll never make a soldier. No, we double the guard. No one else can get through. They've got us boxed in, as nearly as I could tell. No way out. It was my idea to spook their horses, take their attention off us. There's no chance. They've got four guards on those horses. I counted 11 of them all together. There's a stream down there. Plenty of water. Everybody was carrying full bandoliers. Yeah, well, you ain't telling us anything we don't know, and you could have got yourself killed. Could have left us without any gun we need. Like I said, don't expect any cheers from me. All right, Odie, I didn't ask for any. You better get some sleep. You'll be doing guard duty in two hours. I didn't want to guess what was down there. I wanted to know. Or did you want to impress Mrs. Harris? Two hours. I'll be back to wake you up. else could do this thing. Tomorrow we kill him. See, si. A 
There, they're running short of bullets. Even in the dark. Even in the dark, I wouldn't have believed that a man could get in and out of that camp alive. Well, to the quiet skill. Candy was born on the frontier. Skill, yes, but great courage, too. There is gold in that ambulance. Four small kegs of it. An angel and his men aren't going to give up until they've got it. McCauley wants us the gold. Why don't we just give it to him? Because once we'd give him the gold, they'd kill us anyway. They don't want any witnesses. That's right. They've got plenty of ammunition and water, and we're running out of both. Even an optimist would have to say that the enemy is going to win this battle. My first battle. My first time in the field. Yeah, well, it's not over yet. No, of course not. Maybe somebody will happen along after all we did. Just by chance and in sufficient numbers to give us the help we need. No, Mr. Cartwright, I don't believe that. Neither do you. If it should come to that, I hope you won't let them take my wife alive. Hey, it's just like you, Candy, guessing again. I'm not guessing, I know. An old ordinance man like you wouldn't walk across a parade ground without three or four sticks of dynamite in your pocket. <laughs> Against regulations. <laughs> When did regulations start bothering you, Artie? A long escort mission like this, you'd bring a whole bundle. All right. I had six sticks till a week ago. We camped at White River, and I, uh, <laughs> I got a hundred for fresh trout. Now, I'm talking about now. Three. I got three sticks left. You got fuse? We ain't gonna use fuse. Why not? We throw it at them, they throw it back. We'll use a short fuse. No. I got something else, something special. Fulminate of mercury. No fuse needed. 86 pounds of impact. <laughs> That's what the book says, 86 pounds. Me, I, uh, I ain't so sure I sweat when I look at them. I don't blame you. Take it easy. Be careful. So what we gotta do is, uh, figure out a way to make Anchor Montana lean on these things, 86 pounds worth. That's right. Nobody! This... This is punishment for babies. You make me hurt you. I give you pain you never even dream about. This is no big thing. The gold does not belong to you. Tell them to give us the gold. And we all part friends, huh? That woman up there, she is your wife. She's a very beautiful woman. You do like I say. I don't know her. You don't do as I say. I know her better! <laughs> That gun away. We attack into their guns. We lose more men. We tie him to those trees. In the daylight, 
they see he is alive, they get mad, they worry, they make mistakes. He couldn't get past them. Uh, I guess he felt he had to try. But he's a fool. He should have known better. Yes, he should have known better. But I suppose he felt he had to impress the lady, too. the dynamite? I went to get him, didn't I? Oh, it's my fault. No, I should have known he'd try. Miss Ann, he only did what he, what he thought he had to do. Don't go faulting yourself. Buy more whiskey than a man could ever drink. <laughs> yeah. Give me the detonators. Patch a shirt down there, it'd be a clean shot. Yeah. Only trouble is you'd be killing two men. First him and then Captain Harris. We'll need a white flag. Yeah, I'll get a towel from the ambulance.
Mr. Bennett. I'll get him back for you. You let the captain go. One. There are four in that ambulance wagon. Give us four kegs, and we give you the captain. Just one. All. We want it all. Captain Harris. Time to go. Go on, go on. See, the colonel will give him my regards. Tell him from me you married yourself quite a man. <laughs> 